Hi, I wanted to get on here and do a video. This, this was supposed to be on Monday, but I actually was a little bit under the weather on Monday. So here is my easy, Mar Magic Monday is always going to be my easy version of a stamp set or card. <clears throat> so this is um, Magic Monday's version, even though it's Wednesday. So my goal is to always get to um, Monday, do an easy version of a stamp set, and on Friday, I'm gonna do a more stepped up version of this on Friday. So I wanted to make sure that um, uh, you know, you could see this version as well. So the stamp set I'm using is the Seaside Notions stamp set. And um, it's just a very sweet stamp set. There's another stamp set in the smaller catalog, in the spring catalog. Um, oh gosh, I forget what it's called now. It's a, it's a bigger set and it has a lot more detail and really, really um, ornate versions of um, seashells and sea life but this one I'll raise it up a little bit so you can see you can see it's it's like rough line drawings it's not a really super precise version of uh, sea life which I kind of like it because of that I like that it's not this perfectly exact version you can see some of the extra strokes and extra marks on the side here and I really like that and I like that effect and so um, I just think that that really gives a nice detail to it. So I'm gonna be using this stamp set. It is retiring, so if you would like to order anything, go ahead and go to fabulousstamper.com and click on shop and use this host code. And um, I haven't, I should have decided what my April giveaway would be, but you'll get a little something in the mail. I'm not sure what, um, but I'll think of something good to give you. So this is Seaside Notions. We're gonna be using that. We're also going to be using um, the Knight of Navy stamp set. I only have about eight full stamp pads. The rest of my stamp pads are these tiny ones, these that come in the paper pumpkin kits. This is soft suede. So we're going to use soft suede and we're going to use Knight of Navy. We're going to use some basic white cardstock and then the stamps. And so I'm super excited to do this because I just, I don't know, I love nautical theme. I, I didn't realize how much I love nautical themed things until... I was stamping in the last couple of years. I really liked, you can see my like a little mess ups down here, but um, they're my stamp offs and you'll see we'll do that in a minute. So I think the first one we'll do is we'll do this first one here. Um, oops, there we go. Um, and as you can see on this one, I'll raise it up. There's a little mark, the Knight of Navy ink. I got it on my finger when I was stamping and I had marked this little part of uh, on the white. I didn't throw it away because I don't really believe in um, tossing out, you know, mistakes because usually they can be covered. So I had a couple options that I was going to use to cover up my mistakes. So I have these sequins here. These are the Artistry Bloom sequins. And I guess I just wanted to show you that you can always cover up. I think I want to use those or I could use the rhinestones. I don't think anyone's watching, so I'm not sure if I'll get any feedback to see. Um, yeah, and so I think I'm gonna use the blue instead of the rhinestones. I like that this is very monochromatic, but because I made the little mistake there, I'll go ahead and use a sequin to cover up my little error. And so there you go, we covered up that blue ink. No one will see it. And I'll put a couple um, little sequins because then it looks more even. I think I'll put another one here. And it looks almost like bubbles. And maybe I'll put another one up in the other corner. I usually do odds. Oops. These are the Artistry Bloom sequins. And I just love them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or maybe I'll just put another one here. No, I think I'll put another small one to this side. I thought there was a third size side. I might have used it there we go so we got three little sequins there one is covering up my error and the others are just for show so i left that error there on purpose to show you online because you know i'll make mistakes on my cards all the time but i cover them up with just a little something you know a little something extra to cover up the mistake and no one would even know that i ever made a mistake there and so live and learn 
So my hands, sometimes with the dark ink, sometimes I'll be a little sloppier, especially with the big pads, I'm not used to them as much. And so I think that I, that's why I'd gotten ink on my hand when I was stamping. So we'll go ahead and do this card first. And this is actually a very simple card. This is a four and a half. I like to do the tinted cards. People call them different cards, but I like the tinted cards. I like that you can stand them up this way or you can stand them like a little tent and I just love the way that they um, the, the way that it looks when I have a card that I've made that way because then I can stand it up on a desk or you know sometimes my sister when I give them to her she'll put them up so um, any of my sisters actually usually do that so um, I just like that style so let me put my rhinestone to the side so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my coral I'm going to make my own designer series paper this is just designer series paper essentially um and you know stampin up has some really gorgeous paper you know that of all kinds the one that they have currently in the catalog is a very pastel um a very very pastel um coral and blue for the nautical shells which is really nice but it just wasn't really my style i prefer the traditional navy and some other types of blues so i thought well how can i use this set without using some of that other dsp well i'm just going to make my own so what i tend to do is i tend to turn it to the side um this one i didn't do it as well but let me put move it to the side so i tend to turn my card to the side i'll link up my little stamp here and you see, I have to. I've got to be careful because if I push too down, too far down, I'll get it on the tips of my fingers. I'm just not used to it as much as the small ones. And so what I tend to do is I tend to do it at an angle. And I'm gonna do another one. And even though I don't need them in the center, because I'm gonna cover this up by keeping with the consistent pattern even across the middle. It allows me to make sure that my pattern looks more, just more um, consistent, Duh. you know, like for lack of a better word. It just allows it to look like a more clean pattern, like I didn't just make it up. And so let me make sure I do one more here, okay? And then over here, do one like that. And the center will be, you know, covered up, but still, it just allows me to know that I've covered the whole thing, and I know that my pattern is going to be a little more even. And it's not perfect, you know, but over here I noticed at the top, I had missed a couple spots here. No one has also noticed, it's really just me, but I just, you know, noticed that and thought, oh, I don't like that. So I decided I would, um, when you want to make a pattern, and you can see, I did make, it's not a perfect pattern, but if you if you do it in an angle like this, no one's gonna notice any mistakes that you made because it already has the angle. Now, you're more than welcome to do it in a straight across line. I just find that it's harder to keep a consistent line all the way across the top. That's just my experience. So then I take my little, um, so this is a four and a half by 11 piece and I scored it at five, four and a quarter by 11 and I scored it at five and a half. Okay. And that's how I got my little tent. So now we're going to do my little, um, seahorse. And this is, I want to say this is, uh, yeah, this is two inches wide by three and a half inches. So this is two inches by three and a half inches. That means that this is gonna be two and a quarter. So this is two and in, two inches, yeah. Two inches by three and a half. So this is two inches. So when I wanna layer, make sure your next layer is only a quarter inch. So this is two inches, the white one. So that means I want my other layer to be a quarter inch wider. So that would be two and a quarter inches, okay? And this is three and a half inches this way. So that means I need this blue piece to be three and three quarter inches this way. So 3.75 instead of three and a half, okay? So, um, you know, and if you go by quarters, you can always get a decent border around the edges. And I only learned that from other crafters by watching them craft. And so, 
it was just something I learned. And in order to figure out how big my my little white piece needed to be, I just measured my I just measured my seahorse. You know, I measured it. I, there's a little rulers on the edge of this here. You can't see, but there's a little ruler on the edge of my paper. And I just measured my seahorse to see how long it was. And it, it was about three something inches wide. So I made sure my, my paper was more than big enough. Okay. So, um, long. Oh, I see I got some blue on my, my finger when I press down. That's why I got to be a little more cautious with the big pads. All right. For myself. I'm just, I have big hands and anyway. So, all right, so we'll go ahead and stamp my little seahorse down. It's such a simple card. It looks really fancy, but it's actually really simple. Um, it's not a very complicated um, card. I think I'm gonna need this in a minute, actually, so I'll set it aside. It's not a really complicated card. It's actually really simple, but it sure does have a nice effect when it's all done. And so I like it just plain. And that's why Monday is my magic Monday. It's always just my plain, oops, I need some more. Um, I need some more of the tape, tape runner. I am using um, an old tape runner until I can run out of the tape, um, a glue tape runner. Stampin' Up sells something called Stampin' Seal. And it's a really nice product. I just haven't used it yet. So let me get this together. All right. So there we go. There we go. Oops, I did that wrong. I was supposed to put it on the back of this. My bad. I already put it on top of the other one. Live TV, as they say. Normally I put the white on top of the blue and then I would put it down. So I'm just gonna go ahead and center this now. There's a little bit of a rough edge there. Go ahead and center this now and then I'll put my seahorse on top of the centered blue. I don't know why there's a little bit of, okay. Get this as centered as I can. Okay, that looks about right, okay. And then I'll put my little seahorse. Normally I put these together and then put them all together onto one, but all right, there you go, done. There you go, and done. And I managed not to get any blue ink on my seahorse. There's a little bit of blue ink on my, my finger. I'm gonna take some alcohol and get that off. I have a little alcohol wipe. And so, I mean, what a nice little card. You know, just a simple note card. Um, it could be a birthday. I didn't put a sentiment on it. I felt like it was just pretty as it was. You know, I felt like it doesn't need anything extra. So I didn't actually add anything more because I just thought the simplicity of it was good enough. And so, um, and here's my error because remember I had that little blue splotch on here. So I just added sequins to cover the error. And so perfect little cards. You know, this could be a note card like, hello, thank you. It could be a happy birthday. I just felt like I didn't want to add any sentiment because I didn't really need it. All right, so then we'll go to the one that's a little bit more complicated. It's not really that much more complicated. It just looks that way. So then we have, oh, that's a little crooked. Just realized that's a little bit crooked. You'll get to see me use my fancy tool. I just realized it's a little crooked. So I don't usually get to use this on camera because I um, I think I was in a hurry. So the reason why this little spatula is helpful is it breaks the seal of the glue underneath. Okay, so it'll, without tearing up your card, it'll break the seal of the glue without ripping the card completely up. Let's see if I can get it up. Let's see, maybe. Mm -hmm. Let's see if it'll work. It might not. I think it will. I think I can, yep. Yeah. It's just tearing the center a little bit. I put some glue down the center. Normally I don't put any down the center, but I did this time for some reason. All right, there we go. Cool. It's coming up. There we go. So, but. 
Come on. There we go. It did rip a little bit in the middle. Let's see how it looks on the inside. Nope, didn't make a big um, problem in the inside. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put it back on. With, oh, it's cause you know what? I used the Terran tape because of the ribbon. That's why it was much stronger. Um, this is Terran tape. Terran tape is a really strong adhesive. I must not have been able to grab this blue one handy when I was putting it together. It was just a little, it was quite crooked, so I wanted to make sure I put it on correctly. Now it's good. I use Terran tape, and Terran tape has a much stronger bond, but as you can see, I, could st I still got it up with this little spatula. It just breaks the seal of the adhesive just enough so that you can peel it up and then put it back down without actually ruining the card. So it's actually good that you got to see my little mistake. I love making mistakes because I think people forget that we all make mistakes when we're doing stuff like this and it's just part of life. And I don't really believe in throwing stuff away. Not, not that I don't believe in throwing things away. I don't believe that mistakes are usually something that you have to toss the whole thing out into the garbage. Usually you can, um, you can recoup your uh, losses. You know, you, you don't have to throw it away completely. And so let me get out my ribbon. I forgot that I was gonna need that. And I have my postage stamp, okay, perfect. All right, so um, let me get the name of this ribbon because it is not retiring, I don't think. Let me look at Stampin' Up's website really quick. So this ribbon here, it's a linen ribbon with some gold flecks in it, which I really like. I thought it turned, I didn't think I'd like it in the catalog. I didn't like it as much. But as soon as I got it in my hands, I realized, you know, I like it a lot more than I thought. It just has this nice gold trimming in the lemon. And it, you can see it's really supple. It's, it's really easy to use. It makes really good bows as well. It is called the Fine Art Ribbon, three eighths of an inch. So it's one centimeter wide, three eighths of an inch, Fine Art Ribbon, ribbon, ribbon. And it makes really nice bows actually because of how supple it is. It's nice and soft. So even though it has the gold, it's not an, it's not a stiff, like super stiff ribbon. It actually can make some really nice bows which can be hard if the ribbon is too tight. So if I wanted to make a nice little ribbon with it, it makes a nice ribbon, or I can just do it plain like I did. Cause I thought this was kind of like a sort of masculine card in a way too. So I thought I would make this card. Um, just keep it simple with the, it's got a touch of gold, but it's not anything insane. So then I used the soft suede and I tend, I don't have a large ink pad for every single um, ink because I have a small apartment, so I tend to stick with some of the smaller um, the smaller ink pads. These come in the paper pumpkin kits that come every single month, and I absolutely love paper pumpkin. It's an all-inclusive kit that includes everything you need to make a craft in any given month. And sometimes the month, in some months, it's a, um, in some months, it's a, uh, cards in other months it's treat holders in another month it's um, uh, in another month it's um, like a full gift sometimes we'll get like a little gift near Mother's Day where you make a full gift for your uh, you know women in your life or whatever and so that actually is another nice thing I feel like around Mother's Day we usually get some kind of gift not always but it's common we've also gotten some at other times but all right, so let me go ahead and ink it up. Now it is kind of, see this is where I don't have that prop. With the big pad, I just stamp it one time with some ink. But with the little pad, I just like to make sure it's nice and inked. And the soft suede is the perfect little beige. And I'm just gonna randomly stamp my images. It's like a mix between beige and gray. It has a nice, um, it has a nice, uh, color to it. And I'm just randomly stamping. I love the sand dollar. I love sand dollars. I don't know what it is about them, but they have always been my fave. 
And so let me stamp one here. And let me stamp this large one down here. Okay. And it's random. I'm just making my own. Um, I'm just making my own. Is that all the shells? Oh, there's this one here. Let me do another sand dollar over here in this corner. You can plan it out perfectly if you want. If you wanted to get a different... You know, if you wanted it to be perfectly symmetrical, you're more than welcome to. Um, this is just how I did it. And I'm just gonna ink up this little corner so I can put one up here. And it runs off, but that's okay. I'm just trying to fill it up to make sure it's completely full. And here's this tiny clam. Let me put this clam right here. I think I'll put another clam right, I, I want to put one right here. Yeah, there we go, good. And then let me put a sand dollar at the top. I like it when it runs off a little because then it looks like it was just regular paper that I used. Let me do one over here. And I think I'll do the the um, the top of the horse right here, just so there was a little bit more of him. And I think I'll do him down here a little bit too. Just like having that little, so it looks totally full, and I'm not actually missing any particular areas. Okay, and that looks good. All right, that looks perfect. All right, so there we go. So now we have our little. Um, piece. Now, all I did was I cut these so it's easier to stamp it first before you trim it. So then you take your paper trimmer and this is three inches wide. So this is three inches wide by four inches. So this is three by four. So I'm going to cut this little white paper in one inch strips. So there's a one inch on this side. Honestly, I know you might think of them, but I actually didn't realize that one inch was over there and I was always trying to like find the one that's under this thing and it's much easier to use this one on the outside because you see once I put the plastic here, it's like covered up. I can't find it. So it's actually easier for me to use this one here. And so one inch, move my paper aside. And then again, I do another one inch. Cause see, trying to find the one inch here was a little harder. And so, and see how I can't hold it because my finger is too fat. But if I get it lined up on that far side, then I know I'm exactly right. And press the plastic down and it just holds it perfectly. So just three one inch strips, one inch by four inch in the end, okay? And so remember, because this was three by four, I have to make sure this is a little bit wider. So this is actually, because it's a triptych, which means three panels, triptych means three panels. So because it's a triptych, I had to measure this a little differently than I did the uh, the seahorse. So this is one, two, three, and a, and a half. Because I needed the space in between. Normally, I would just put a quarter inch around but because I needed space in between the panels, let me put these back in order. There we go. Um, because I needed space in between the panels, I needed it to be a half inch wider this way, okay? So um, this is three and a half by four and a quarter. So the length just stayed four and a quarter, but um, the width had to be a little bit bigger. And I recommend you do the outside edges, so make sure I have my order correct, okay? And I recommend you do the outside edges first because you can center the one a little bit better if you get these ones in place. So I'll do my outside edges. All right, let me get that on there. Get it spaced on the side. Good. I'll do my other outside edge. Oh, let me make sure it's correct. Yeah, I've, I've 
I was afraid I flipped it upside down. Right? I just like this stamp set. I just like the look of it. It just has a nice look to it. All right, and so then we go and get this one centered. There we go. And then this one we can center in the middle. And you see, because these two were centered on the outside, it's easier to center this middle one. Not centered. These ones over here weren't, well, they're centered in the corners is what I meant. I teach English, but I don't always know English is what I tell people. Get it just right. And again, nothing is ever perfect. So even if you notice that it's like slightly off, Unless it's totally off, I'm gonna leave it. And then I'm just gonna grab a little piece here, a little piece of ribbon, just enough to wrap around. Whoops. All right, and I actually use tape. I usually just use scotch tape to hold down the ribbon because, and, um, oh, and we're gonna be using this little postage stamp for our sentiment. So I wanna make sure it's wide enough from the bottom. I don't want it too far up because I kinda of like this sand dollar and this seahorse. So I want it down here, but not too far down. So, all right. So I think about right there is good. All right. And I can try it and see if I like it and just redo it. And then stretch this around as straightly as straight as I can, not straighty. I love this fine art ribbon. I didn't think I was gonna like it and it doesn't look as cute in the catalog. Yeah, see that's gonna be perfect right there. And so now that I have that perfectly set around, I used a little bit of the Terran tape because of the ribbon. And so that is why I was using the tear and tape, I realize now. Because the ribbon, you know, you want to make sure your ribbon, normally I use dimensionals and pop things off on dimensionals, but because this, I wanted this one to lay flat, I decided not to use dimensionals with this one. Um, because I used the dimensional on the happy birthday. If you have too many dimensionals, it makes it too high and then you can't mail it. And so I go, I'm going to go ahead and leave this on here. Take off. This is tear and tape. It just, it's just a nice strong. You can also use the stamp and seal plus. We have two types. So we have stamp and seal, which is for basic cards and stuff like that. And then the stamp and seal plus is for like 3D projects, which is what this is for. It's for things that are stronger, 3D projects, ribbon, things that you know need to really be held down because they can pop up. I probably didn't have to have the tear and tape, but I did it anyway. And so I just take my card base, same card base. So this is four and a quarter by 11, and then it's scored at five and a half. And I'm just gonna put my little, just gonna put my little uh, part on here. The other one I had crooked, so I wanna make sure this one's straight. There we go, perfect, done. That part is done. Now, to stamp the sand dollar, to get the sand dollar, the, a faded color in the background here, I need to stamp off, they call it. Or they call it second generation stamping or whatever. I always just called it stamping off because I'm stamping off my standard paper. So I'm gonna ink up my soft suede, okay? And this is full strength. And this is the second generation strength. This is the third generation strength. So how light did I get it? Mm, it looks like I possibly used, it looks like I used the third generation uh, softness instead of the second generation because you want it just to be a faded color in the background. And I just love sand dollars, so that's why I wanted to use it again. Okay, so I'm gonna stamp it once, stamp it twice, and then the third one is the one I'm gonna put in the corner of my little tag. And see, it's nice and faded. Yeah, it was the third generation. And so I'm gonna cover that up. And if you do have these little stampin' seal, I mean these little stampin' spots, 
seal them on the side with scotch tape. And when you use a little scotch tape to close them, it keeps them nice and tight. I have had some of these for 15 years. I can't believe they've lasted this long, but I have. Um, I didn't have, I had a small apartment. I didn't have a lot of money. And so we sold these, you know, they sold these little spots. And I thought, okay, that's perfect because I don't have many colors of ink, but I need colors of ink. So what can I do to make this, um, what can I do to make this better? And so, I, you know, to where I have more ink. Well, I would use these and I also use markers, but that's a separate, you know, I can tell you about that later. So um, I, I'll show you that technique another time. So here we go. So we have our happy birthday. Ink up my happy birthday with the Knight of Navy. And I'm gonna just stamp it right down. There you go. And see that nice light sand dollar in the back just gives that little tiny touch to make it look pretty. I always do the dark last, light first, dark last. And then I'm gonna use some dimensionals to put this happy birthday on. Stampin' dimensionals are the best because they're nice and narrow. So let's go ahead and pop this down in the center. There we go. Done. There you go. There's your two cards. These two I made today. And I just thought, they, how sweet is that? They're just a sweet, simple, basic card. Nothing fancy, nothing crazy. I just, you know, I just like the, the simplicity and the nice quality to it. Oh, uh, let me hold this up so you can see the gold a little better. Um, you see it's linen, but it has this nice gold. Oh, I don't want to get any blue on my card. It has this nice gold shimmer to it. Oops, there we go. So there's a little bit of gold in that linen, linen which is nice. So I didn't realize I was holding it so far to the side. <laughs> like, um, So, all right. So that was the cards that we made today. That's it. That's all I was gonna do for us today was make these two little cards and that was the end of it. And um, when I clean my stamps, I use the Stampin' Chamois. You can also use the Stampin' Scrub. This is just water, You put it's a sponge and you put water on it and then you just wipe off the ink. It just all comes off with just water. You know, you don't have to use these little sponges but it is kind of helpful having it handy so I can clean all my stuff off. And it does look dirty. It's actually not dirty. It's just the ink stains the little sponge. I don't, I guess they, I don't know why they didn't make it black because if it were black, then we know that we wouldn't see all the sponge, but um, see it on the sponge, but I guess they decided to make it purple. But So all cleaned off. Here's our two little cards. I used the Seaside Notions. I used the Knight of Navy ink and the soft suede ink. So here's my Knight of Navy ink, soft suede ink, and I used the fine art ribbon, um, which was the, where'd it go? Yeah, this fine art ribbon, which has the gold on it, which I really like that little shimmer. It's linen, but it has that nice gold touch to it. So, um, and that's all I used, and then just a standard, um, and they're just a standard envelope, you know, medium sized envelope that we have. And so if you would like to order anything, go to fabulousstamper.com and click on shop. And you can pick up any of the things I have here, the Stampin' Chamois, the ink, um, the Stampin' Seal, the Terran tape, even the paper snips or the paper trimmer. You know, I love our paper trimmer. I love that it snaps to a nice closed and it has the night, the measurements are really good on this and it has an arm to extend it out to 12 inch pieces. So whatever you like to pick up, you can, or if you wanted to get the sequins for, you know, when you make a mistake or rhinestones, when you make a mistake, cover it with an embellishment. That's my solution to everything. So, all right, well, I hope you have a great day. Thanks for coming by and um, that's it for today. And on Friday, if you join me on Fabulous Friday, 
if you join me on Fabulous Friday, I'm gonna use this again, but it's gonna be a more stepped up card. It's gonna be a little bit more complicated than this. Most of my stamping is not that complicated, but I will make it a little fancier than this level. I, although I think this is perfectly acceptable. I mean, obviously these are nice cards, but I'll step it up a little bit more, maybe a little more embellishments, a little more technique to show just a little more enhanced version of a card. And so there you go. All right, well, I hope you have a great day and thanks so much. And um, that's all for today.